We are here with Mr. Dan McGuire, the CEO of Homeless Solutions, who has been fighting to support homeless youth for almost 20 years now. Mr. McGuire, how did you personally get involved in the fight against homelessness? Hi, Ishan, uh, and, and happy to be here with you today. Um, I had, uh, in my career, uh, started in the private sector, and uh, after going to grad school for urban planning studies, um, segued into the nonprofit sector and community development, working in uh, Newark on affordable housing and mm -hmm. neighborhood planning, and through my work developing affordable housing, that became my primary professional interest, and I had an opportunity to come um, back to Morris County, where I lived, and do the work of providing affordable housing for homeless solutions, uh, and that was a chance and a challenge that I, I jumped at uh, mm -hmm. 18 years ago. All right. Well, could you pro provide us some information about Homeless Solutions and what it does as a whole? Sure. Uh, homeless Solutions is the largest provider of homeless shelter and services in Morris County. Uh, we were formed in 1983, which means that next year uh, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Wow. And uh, we have a variety of programs. We provide emergency shelter. We have the largest emergency shelter in the, in the county with a capacity of 85 beds. Uh, we provide transitional housing for working homeless families. Uh, to stay with us for a, a limited period of time while they continue their search for for housing. And we also develop and manage uh, affordable rental properties around Morris County um, because, uh, as we discovered through the evolution of our organization, one of the primary reasons people become homeless is their inability to afford housing. And one of the challenges to escaping homelessness is, again, obtaining housing that one can afford. Okay. So what services are available at Homeless Solutions? Sure. So uh, again, uh, in our emergency shelter, uh, where we have programs for single men, single women, families, and uh, homeless with uh, uh, severe and pervasive mental health issues, um, we uh, you will enter a program for uh, a length of time, where you'll receive case management, um, uh, of course, uh, meals, and a variety of life skills education, transportation. Um, if you're one of our families and you need to have a child in daycare, they're not public school aged yet, uh, we will work to assist you in, in obtaining child care assistance and placement in child care so that you, the adult or adults in the family, can can uh, keep your job or get a job and be working towards your uh, self-sufficiency and your goals. Um, the uh, other related services are, of course, the affordable housing, where people can apply um, to uh, live in permanent housing that is matched to their income, where the rents are matched to their income. And we also have an outreach program um, for people living in our apartments or who have Obtain, uh, graduated from our program and obtained housing out in the community with other uh, rental properties. And we work with you for up to two years um, with whatever you need to help keep you housed um, because we never want to see you again. We want you to remain self-sufficient and moving forward with your, with your life goals. That sounds great. Is there a specific county you're focused in or do you work across New Jersey? No, we are, uh, that's a good question. We are Morris County focused. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is where we have our shelter. That's the, the, the shelter beds are focused on or the, the people in Morris County who have come across hard times. And, uh, and as well, that's where we've developed all of our affordable housing. And uh, barring a surprise, we would probably keep our footprint for affordable housing in Morris County as well. Yeah. Someone is in need of an emergency shelter or transitional services. How do they reach out to Homeless Solutions? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's a two-part question. Um, that we, uh, they can find us on the web at homelesssolutions.org. And uh, they can uh, also call us at 973-993-0900. However, uh, a few years back, there was a, a change in the overall system of how homelessness is addressed in not only in Morris County, but around the country and, and around New Jersey, where instead of individuals in need of assistance reaching out to different providers one at a time and all at the same time, uh, there's now a one-stop shop approach and instead of calling Homeless Solutions, somebody who is at risk of homelessness or who is already homeless in Morris County should call 211. 211 is an, a, uh, an organization as well as a phone number. And they are sort of the, uh, the gateway, the front door, if you will, to accessing uh, information and referrals uh, mm -hmm. to, to uh, homeless services in Morris County. Okay. Are there any primary groups or demographics your organization tends to serve? Now, one of the things that's, that's interesting about Homeless Solutions is we cover a pretty broad um, demographic, if you will. As I mentioned before, uh, we have sort of four specific physical spaces within our shelter and, and programs for single men, single women, families, and the mentally ill homeless, some of the other providers might just do men or just do families. Um, and uh, so we're serving everybody. I should also add, because I forgot uh, earlier in the overview that also during the uh, winter months, we have an overnight warming center from December 1st through the end of March in partnership with Morris County and uh, for focusing on the street homeless and situationally uh, emergency situations where people mm -hmm. might stay for a couple of days just to stay uh, warm in, uh, in the dangerous cold. Um, so yeah, we're serving everyone, uh, old and young, uh, families, um, singles, the, the, whole, the whole range of whoever has a need in Morris County. That's great. Yeah, lots of the other organizations we've interviewed have had more specific focuses, it seems. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way we've evolved over time. We, we, mm -hmm. We've grown, that's the advantage of doing this for 40 years. So, uh, um, that, you know, it's, it's not a uh, comment on any of the other groups. That's just how we happen to evolve and we're happy to be able to help different people. And, and if you have, uh, um, as long as you have the sum of the parts that all the demographics are getting addressed in the community, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there are any common misconceptions people hold about homeless peoples in general? Yeah, I think the I think the big one uh, that that we see in in our sector is that people think it's because of uh, laziness or uh, life choices, and sometimes those can be factors, especially the life choices, but um, for the most part, I think uh, people are always surprised when they talk to us at length or take the tour or hear from people or, or the stories of our of our guests that uh, that there's a lot of situational homelessness mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, there's issues that could happen to any of us that would leave them homeless. Um, you know, there there are thankfully a growing awareness in the general public and in New Jersey about the uh, opioid crisis and and what was behind that was not accidental it was a lot more insidious by the you know by big pharma and and how a lot of people got prescribed medications they didn't need getting hooked and there's a lot of residual around that and a growing awareness about you know the mental health crisis that uh, our communities face and that the, you know, the stigma from that is thankfully, I think, lessening over time. And uh, we just see, and I think we all saw during COVID, how difficult circumstances and crises can affect all of us in different ways. But for those of us who might have a actual 
undiagnosed or diagnosed issue, bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, et cetera, that uh, that can really affect you throughout your life or if it comes on episodically or at some point later in life and, and take you down a spiral um, that can lead to homelessness. Uh, and um, I think really one of the differentiating factors just be between you or I becoming homeless and somebody else is your support network, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, um, you might be starting off less advantaged in the first place uh, or, or whatnot, but um, the, the people without the support networks to catch them when they fall are really the difference between you and I becoming homeless, right? You can stub your toe along the way, Sean, you could decide you didn't want to go to college later in life or you wanted to stop working in high school, but your support network is going to keep you moving forward. And fortunately, you know, your, your family probably has a health care plan and you get resources and friends and family will lift you up. Um, if I lost my job tomorrow, I'd have people who would help take care of me and get me back on my feet and I'd have, you know, unemployment insurance and all sorts of things. But the, the people who, who lack the network um, for whatever reason, maybe they relocated here, maybe they're estranged after years of the mental health challenges or the opioid uh, epidemic, um, but they're the ones who struggle and spiral down the most. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, think that, I think that's something that I've certainly observed time and time again. Yeah. What are the best actions we as a community can take to solve homelessness? Uh, well, uh, I'd say probably every organization, including Homeless Solutions, relies heavily on volunteers mm -hmm. to get involved. And if, and if your viewers went to homelesssolutions.org, um, they could find the, the page about how to volunteer, all the different ways, whether it's you know, every night of the year, we we uh, feed our guests by the help of volunteers coming in and buying the ingredients and cooking the meals, hosting parties for children to keep their lives as normal as possible while they're in the shelter, tutoring, um, providing a life skills training for adults if you have a particular skill, budgeting or nutrition or uh, all, parenting. Um I think another one is getting educated. And so thanks to your project and your website, people can have a pretty good resource right there of New Jersey specific um, methods and tools and data. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, here in Morris County and I'm, I'm sure in Wayne, a lot of people don't realize because you don't see people sleeping in the streets for the most part. Maybe you might go to one or two towns in our counties and see a homeless person so it's invisible but the statistics such as the ones on your website bear out hundreds and hundreds of people at any given time are homeless in our very affluent counties right now yeah. uh, so education uh, and awareness is important and then the other thing i would also say is that um, increasingly um, and as I noted before about why we started developing affordable housing is because homelessness is a housing issue. There's not enough housing that people can afford. So as, as the headlines today are screaming about the ridiculous double digit, you know, 30% increases in the, in the rental market here in New Jersey, that's squeezing people out of being able to afford whatever modest unit they can barely get by on and if they're spending too much money on rent they're not spending it on food medicine clothing child care utility bills whatever it is that mm -hmm. maintains a safe decent standard of living for people so um, when in each person's town they might be contemplating an affordable housing development um, which is a topic that's wildly understood by most New Jerseyans, that they could be a little bit more uh, educated and supportive of affordable housing opportunities being created in their towns. 
um, because there are people in their towns that need it, whether they believe it or not. What can youth in particular do to help in the solving of homelessness? Um, I think I think all of everything that I just said was would apply to younger people such as yourself. Um, I do think that um, obviously with the project that you are doing at your school, um, likewise there are clubs, groups uh, at at different high schools that that are there to address. Um, homeless issues in their town or in their county, uh, and they can get involved in those, uh, and uh, or start one on their on their own, um, mm -hmm. and then check out all the different organizations. As I said, there's a lot of great volunteer opportunities at the organizations that that teenagers, in particular, of a certain age at, at Homeless Solutions, can do. So. Um, you know, one example here at Homeless Solutions is we have something called the Buddies Program, where it's sort of like a big brother, big sister kind of thing, where we have a lot of kids coming through our shelter programs who are having a tough experience. It's very traumatic to, to be a homeless child. And often, particularly in the, in the single family, uh, single parent households, an older child might be tasked with things that are really, you know, a lot to ask of a young kid, um, sort of co-parenting almost, so watching for the little kids. And uh, so our buddies program is an attempt to just keep their life as good as possible, uh, match them up with a mentor. And that could include, depending on the age of the child, a, uh, a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a great thing. Uh, and again, I mentioned uh, hosting game nights, babysitting kids while the parents are taking one of the life skills classes, um, hosting birthday parties for the kids. We do monthly birthday parties. Everybody's got a, a September birthday. We'll, we'll have one big party for all the kids and uh, show them, try and show them a good time. Let them, you know, forget whatever, you know, the difficult situation is that's going on uh, in their life right now. They're still going to have a birthday with cake and presents and, and fun. So, uh, those are some things. Another thing that I'll mention, a uh, shameless plug, Ishan, which which might be for the more adventurous teens out there, um, we do something called a night in the cold. Um, and people can find that at our website at, at homelesssolutions.org. But it's a new event we've been doing for a couple of years now. And uh, it's coming up on Friday, December 2nd. And basically it's, it's, a, it's a sleeping out, a night of sleeping out um, to just have, you know, or walk a mile in the shoes of somebody who might not have somewhere to lay their head at night. Um, we, have, we have plenty of people who have to sleep in a car or sleep in a tent, uh, street homeless. And so uh, we started this a few years ago. It's a fundraiser. You know, you get together with your friends and you'll ask your parents to contribute in support of your night of suffering um, by sleeping out in the cold. Could be really windy, could be rainy or snowy. Not good. It, it won't be. It won't be pleasant sleeping on the hard ground. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the people who have done it have gotten a great appreciation. They know they can still go inside in the morning and have a cup of coffee and and then take a nice nap and a hot shower. But that lots of people in our community can't. So there's a lot of education that goes into that uh, project as well, where they'll learn about statistics and. Uh, solutions, but uh, it's an experiential event, and people have really enjoyed doing that. And mm -hmm. teenagers are welcome. Are there any challenges regarding homelessness that are unique to our community in New Jersey? Uh, I'd say maybe not unique, but you know, uh, first of all, New Jersey is one of the most expensive housing areas in the country. Um, so more and more people are, are priced out of housing. Uh, I talked about the lack of affordable housing. Um, again, that's becoming a national issue, but as a coastal, you know, generally East and West coasts are, are more expensive and not enough naturally occurring housing that is affordable. So the affordable housing uh, issue is there. 
And then I think, again, as I referenced before, it's not like some of our urban centers, New York, Newark, San Francisco, wherever, where you walk down the street and you see homeless everywhere. In, in Morris County, you could go a long time and never see a homeless person. So people are just unaware. And so it's a hidden challenge. And not, not only are there only so many people on the street, they're off in shelters or they're sofa surfing with friends. Um, so, so the challenge of, of awareness and education is, is, is uh, one that we face in a place where there's great affluence and, and a lack of visible homeless population. Yeah. What's been the impact of COVID to your, to your organization in particular? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's been a rough two and a half years to say the least, um, uh, from, from the get go. Uh, so we did a, you know, the biggest first thing was safety and everybody in a congregate setting, the families live in rooms, the singles live in sort of like a dorm barracks style setting with and, and we had to rapidly scramble to keep people spread out, to depopulate the, the shelter. When we, when we moved somebody into housing, we didn't fill the bed because we needed to keep people distance, social distancing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, until the vaccines were available, people were scared to be there. The guests were scared. Our staff was scared. You know, that was back in the day when you were afraid if you touched a doorknob that hadn't been sanitized, you might die, you didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that was a, that put a real strain on, a, on our organization. We've got great support from, from government, from our donors, from corporations and foundations to get plenty of uh, uh, personal protective gear, um, sanitizer and all that stuff. And we had only a couple of people get sick, uh, a couple of guests, and they they all had jobs in those high-risk uh, employers, uh, childcare, nursing homes, and supermarkets. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were very pleased that we were able to keep people safe. Then the follow-up has been the same one that's been happening nationally, which is everybody got through the health scare part. Um, and then we have this great resignation, great reshuffling. So we've had extreme staffing shortages along the way and uh, lots of turnover. And we finally, knock wood, have gotten to a place where most of our positions are full again, but we still have a lot of people who haven't been here for very long, a lot of new faces who aren't familiar with one another. and new people doing different tasks. So um, we still have a long way to go before uh, we're really, you know, firing on all cylinders like we were before COVID. Um, so that's been, that's been a real test to our, to our organization. Mm -hmm. What's been the impact of COVID to the homeless community in general? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think, um, again, as I alluded to, um, folks who are already experiencing the trauma of homelessness now having the additional trauma of trying to navigate COVID. So whether it's fearing for your safety and the anxiety that comes with that on top of your, whatever your mental health issues are or your other challenges about employment, et cetera. Um, it was a real tough time Right, and everything shuts down. All of our volunteers, we, we closed our organization of volunteers. So a lot of those life skill programs and amenities that are meant to boost people and move them forward had to be on hiatus. Mm -hmm. So people stayed with us longer. We didn't, we, we threw out our time limits that we would normally try and stick to and said, look, people aren't hiring because people are closed. Um, and apartments 
are harder to obtain because during that same period, uh, Ishan, you might have known there was a moratorium on evictions, which is great on the one hand because it did keep people from becoming, kept more people from becoming homeless. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that was there was less turnover in that natural turnover of units of a certain price point that would be ideal for the people who were already homeless and needing to be placed with vouchers or who had jobs. So it was harder to, to get people housing during that time. Um, and so I guess that those would be the, the primary challenges that, that, uh, that our homeless want to face. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. McGuire, for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet and talk with me about this important issue. It was very informative. Thanks again. Ishan, thank you and good luck with your project. Thank you.